Good evening, and welcome to Seema's discussion, What Makes Art Live? Concept or Trend? This is an age of hyper-partisanship and polarization, where social media echo chambers reward digging in and doubling down. And there are two, three-word phrases which are becoming rarer. I was wrong. I don't know. Here at SEMA, we believe, still, that good faith and a serious, meaningful debate are, uh, well, I did not say intellectual, because now that, these days, is a trendy concept. And that this meaningful debate is possible to rethink our positions on all kinds of issues. I'm very happy to introduce our participants this e uh, for this evening's discussion. Uh, Mr. Niladri Chatterjee, Professor, English Literature. Sreyoshi Chatterjee, Practicing Artist and Art Historian. Rita Dutta, Art Critic. Anjana Basu, Author. Pankaj Panwar, Principal, Kala Bhavan. Moinak Bhomik, Film Director. Shomi Raich, Artist. And this discussion will be moderated by Rakhi Sarkar, director of SEMA Gallery. So I'm looking forward to a lively, lively discussion. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this um, lively, hopefully a lively debate. We are going through turbulent times and a particularly turbulent day today. And I hope we can all settle down and talk about something a little more profound, a little more deep, and enjoy our uh, time over here. Now, first we'll try and go into the title itself. What makes art live? Is it the concept? Is it the idea? Or is it just the fashion and the trend? How can we qualify the term live? Do we mean that art which makes lasting impression on our minds, or is it merely about posing valid questions, pertinent questions relevant to the times, or is it sheer grandeur and sensual magic that makes some art distinct from others, more noticeable? We will get each of our speakers to enlighten us with their opinions and perspectives and insight. I will call upon each participant to open up with a brief statement of two minutes and then lead the session on to a free-flowing discussion. And there will be ample scope for debate and discussion. And I hope we all enjoy, as long as we don't interrupt the other person wildly, interruption is permissible. We will invite some questions at the end of the discussion. So first, we start with these opening statements. So I will request Niladri to please say a few words on the topic itself. Um, Rakhidi, thank you so much. Um, thanks also for organizing this rather wonderful discussion. Um, I would actually say that more definitely not trend. Uh, I would think that what makes art live is ultimately skill um, and it is also about the audience. Um, you know, I'm an academic, so I'm going to come to it from a, a slightly theoretical point of view. Um, and I would want to refer to one of my favorite theoreticians, um, somebody called Judith Butler. Um, and Butler had said in one of her books that love makes us ecstatic. And she had broken up the word ecstatic, so she had made it ex and static. And what she said is that love changes us. It, it brings us out of our staticity. And I actually think that art perhaps does exactly the same thing. Uh, great art changes us in whatever tiny way, in whatever ephemeral way. It changes us. And once we have been in the presence of great art, or even good art, we are never quite the same. So I think what makes art live, my submission would be the skill with which it is created and the audience. So now we pass on to Rita. 
Rita being a critic, I hope she'll bring another dimension uh, to this talk. Thank you. Thank you, Rakhi. And thank you, Protiti. Uh, when Protiti introduced us, she used the word rethink. And you know, this is a topic. You know, when I looked at the topic and I thought, this makes us rethink some key terms. For example, art, what is art, uh, concept, and uh, trend. So these are terms we use all the time, but I, I don't know. I mean, they become cliches. So there are times that we need to rethink them. And I was just, you know, this brought to mind um, how philosophers have sought to redefine the aesthetic experience. And, you know, they were... Uh, they did not know, uh, I, I shouldn't say they did not know, they were inquiring into this aesthetic experience. And so they thought, is this just a personal experience? Is this subjective? Or should there be some normative, some standards to judge art? So, and uh, in that context, I thought of uh, a quotation from Mondrian which I rather like, so I've just, I've just written it down, and I, I'd just like to read it out. He says, art is only a substitute while the beauty of life is deficient. It will disappear as life gains in equilibrium. This is not unlike what Niladri just said, because life will never gain in equilibrium, so art cannot die. And this tells us that uh, man is aware that there is something deficient in life. And uh, so human civilization has always sought to pursue uh, beauty. Now, beauty, uh, you know, the, the, the definition of beauty keeps changing. But there is something that that search, that aesthetic search, has always been on. and. Um, I think this comes from a very, very deep-seated urge in human beings. And if you look at prehistory, if you look at uh, not just cave paintings and body paint and, you know, uh, jewelry made of bones, etc., but if you look at pottery, see, in pottery, they, there was the, that was just functional. They did not need to attract the opposite uh, gender for propagation of the species. This was just functional. There was, no, there was no need to decorate pottery. And that, I, I feel, is very, very telling. It tells us that there is something, a hunger in human beings, which searches for something which, you know, Kant talks about how we appreciate beauty. And then he says that it has to be disinterested. So this disinterested love of the beautiful, or when we appreciate something, without um, it affecting our gains and losses, that I think is very, very significant. And that I think is what uh, makes art live. Thank um, you so much, Rita. So now we will pass on to Sreyoshi. Sreyoshi being an art historian and a practicing artist, I think she has to constantly battle between the two, between her uh, knowledge and her practice. So I think she could throw light on what exactly we mean by art. Thank you, Rakhidi, and Protiti also. Um, as Rakhidi introduced me as an art historian, which I am in a way because I teach art history and I also, also work. Now, from my point of view, any artwork, whether it is trendy, or very serious, concept-based. Each of them needs skill, surely. But it is not that uh, the skill, sometimes a work of art may lack skill by standard uh, arguments. But then also it becomes uh, very interesting. So for me, skill is not always the criteria of art. But the concept is always like, I have to take an example, typical example, which is just coming to my mind today, that is uh, Dusho, uh, his uh, urinal that he chose. Uh, it was a ready-made object 
and from then on the ready-made entered the art world. My point is that he conceptually chose, no sorry, yes there was a concept inside him but he brought, brought the urinal into the gallery space and placed it on a pedestal. The viewers, they took it as Madonna, Buddha, and so many other intellectual, fo as intellectual things or intellectual form, because art was believed to be uh, forms, shapes, etc. Now we have anti-forms too. But uh, at this point, when he is changing the context, the urinal, when it is placed inside a gallery, that gets an aura of an artwork. So it is not always skill, but the context helps you uh, to look at a very ordinary object which has no beauty, but a very commonplace object which has no sentiment. So you take it for granted as a work of art because it is placed inside the gallery. So by all these standards, like beauty, aesthetics, it is changing all the time. Especially in the trendy works, we'll find a different kind of aesthetics. I find as a teacher in the contemporary uh, practice, there are some typical skills they acquire, like ripping paints or painting so many uh, scratches and things like that and they they call it painterly and all but that is very trendy which lacks concept it has it is only surface for me for me i stand for the concept which actually pushes the art and it makes you think all the time and it also sets new trends uh, later on uh, we can have uh, some more examples. I think my time is up, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much. Now I'll request um, Mr. Shomi Rai. She's also a practicing artist and um, a painter to say a few words. Rakhidi <laughs> এটা খুব পরিষ্কার মতো বলা দরকার আমি বলে একমাত্র যে আর পড়াশোনা খুব কম ছবিটা আকি এটা ঘটনা কিন্তু আমার সব সময় মনে আছে আর্ট নিয়ে যে আমরা শুনি বিশেষ করে আমরা কলেজ থেকে পাস করার পর থেকে যে কনসেপচুয়াল আর্ট আমার আজ অবধি মাথায় ঢোকেনি যে কোন আর্টটার মধ্যে কনসেপ্ট নেই পৃথিবীর কোন শিল্পটার মধ্যে কনসেপ্ট নেই সেটা গুহাচিত্রর আমল থেকে আমার এটা মাথায় ঢোকেনি সুতরাং এই কনসেপচুয়াল আর্টটাকে আমি সত্যি সত্যি আমি বলছি আমার বোধগম্য নয় আমার কাছে আর্টটা আর্ট আর্ট হতে হবে আর্টটা দেখতে হবে আর্ট উইথ হার্ট ইজ ইট নাকি দেখতে হবে আর্ট উইদাউট হার্ট আর্ট উইদাউট হার্ট যেটা সেটাকে আমি আর্ট বলি না কিছু আবার আছে হার্ট উইদাউট আর্ট মানে আর্টই নেই হার্টের মধ্যে সেগুলো আছে সেগুলো আমরা দেখি আমার কাছে সেটাই আর্ট সবসময় মনে হয় যেটা থেকে মানুষের যে কোনো শিল্পীর তার কোনো দরকার নেই সেই কোনো বিদেশি অনুকরণ করার কোনো কিছু করার আর ইন্টেলিজেন্সি ইজ নট আর্ট আমার কাছে যে আমি একটা কিছু করলাম একটা চালাকি দারুণ লাগলো দেখতে হ্যাঁ হয়তো দেখতে দারুণ লাগলো সেটা কি আর্ট হলো আমার কাছে এই প্রশ্নগুলো দিনের পর দিন আমি নিজেকে করি যার জন্য ইন্টেলিজেন্সকে আমি কখনো আর্ট বলি না আমি বলি আর্টটা হার্ট থেকে আসতে হবে অর্থাৎ তার জীবনযাত্রা তার যাপন তার সমাজ এই যে আমাদের সমাজে আমাদের আজকে যদি আমরা পশ্চিমবঙ্গের কথা বলি যে অবস্থা চলছে আমাদের রাজ্যে আমি জানতে চাই কজন আর্টিস্ট তা নিয়ে কাজ করেছেন বা করোনা গেল দু আড়াই বছর কজন আর্টিস্ট করোনা নিয়ে যে গোটা পৃথিবীর কী অবস্থা সেটা নিয়ে কাজ করছেন সেটা যদি অন্তর থেকে কাউর আসে তবে সেটা আর্ট হতে পারে তারপর তো ডেফিনেটলি তার মধ্যে স্কিল আছে কি নেই তার স্ট্রাকচারাল কোনো ভুল আছে কি না বা অনেক উন্নত মানের কি না সেগুলো থাকবেই সেটা তার কতটা গুণে সেটা আলাদা কিন্তু সেটা আর্ট হলো কি না আর্টের মধ্যে হার্ট থাকতে হবে এর বাইরে আমি কিছুতে বিশ্বাস করি না থ্যাংক ইউ সমীর সো ইটস আ ডিবেট বিটুইন দ্য আর্ট হার্ট অ্যান্ড মাইন্ড উই হ্যাভ টু টক অ্যাবাউট এল উই নিড আ লিটল বিট অফ দ্য মাইন্ড অলসো ইন দ্য হার্ট সো এনি ওয়ে উই পাস অন টু আর নেক্সট স্পিকার হু কামস ফ্রম দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড অফ সিনেমা মইনাক ভৌমিক সো দ্যাটস এ নাদার ফ্যাকাল্টি অফ দি আর্টস সো আই থিঙ্ক হিল হেল্প আস very interesting debate because I belong to, I practice uh, a form which is not 
still it's it's been over 100 years it's still not being considered quote unquote art so is it art uh, will it live i think now that we live in a uh, a time of social media where people literally have three seconds to decide and they have more time to decide about what they're going to say so their perspective their sub human beings their subjective opinions are more available than the time that is given uh, to visibly look at art what we, how would we define it as art what comes to mind from my field for definitely is uh, I remember when Alfred Hitchcock made a film called The Psycho. That film, when it came out, it was considered a piece of trash. It was uh, a pulpy novel, a trashy pop culture novel, which was turned into a film, and it was deemed to be absolute uh, garbage, trash. Absolutely, he was not, uh, he was criticized all over the world for it. And then over the years, Every form of cinema, every filmmaker has somehow revisited the imagery, the visual imagery, the sound, the way cinema has been made, somewhere goes back to how Hitchcock used to look at the, the films, especially Psycho. It's over and over again. You turn on a television, you see some kind of a murder mystery, you read a book, somewhere someone is referencing Hitchcock. So I guess how art lives to me would be not how it's judged, not how it's perceived at the moment, but how it will live on through time. I think uh, Pandit Ravi Shankarji is dead, but his music, his jhalas will remain with us somewhere. Somewhere in the back of our head it will play and it will, we will revisit it in some form. It will connect a part of our, you know, it will connect us to our mem some memory or someone will be using it in some way in which that is possibly to me how we will know that yes that was a form of art because that has inspired other people to create more art so to me more than where it's coming from the skill uh, the heart uh, to me what's more important is does it inspire the opinions can be good, sometimes can be bad, there can be criticism, but does it inspire someone else to do something else? In, uh, if, if a bad piece of work inspires someone to do something that makes someone else inspired, we will consider that to be art because that's someone, that's how art lives. It lives through Chaucer inspires Shakespeare, Shakespeare in, inspires other writers. That's how literature has existed. That's how theater has existed. That's how paintings have existed. So I think everything is how much can something inspire someone and how long will it inspire is the longevity of art. Thank you so much, Moinak. Now we'll request Anjana to say a few words. Anjana comes from the world of literature and I think she can throw some light on this aspect. Uh, thank you, Rakhidi, and thank you, Pratiti, for including in me on this panel. I am the one non-visual person on this panel, which, well, they do say a picture is worth a thousand words. But that said, that said, there, the both forms have art in common because it's a matter of feeling it's a matter of emotion, it's a matter of expression. Now for me, what is art? Is art a concept? Is art a trend? Actually, concepts and trends, if you come to think of it over time, have kind of merged into one another. They are, well, they are occasional gimmicks because you are worried that your audience may not be paying attention to you. And uh, you may be doing them because you have want, you need something out of the market. You need money, you need to publish your book, you need someone to see your painting, and therefore you will quickly scribble or paint something which you hope will do something for your life, at least make it better. Thereupon, once it's out there, as long as you're happy, you're fine. But the question comes, is that it? Is that all it is? 
somewhere at the heart of things there must be a reason why you yourself started doing it in the first place and I don't think artists or writers began with concepts or trends. There's that handy quotation about spontaneous overflow of powerful emotion, which Niladri is another English honors is going to, yeah. And that is actually why everybody picks up a pencil, a brush, a pen, because you want to get something out of yourself and put it down. And thereupon, it doesn't matter to begin with because you've said you've said or drawn what you want to what you want to it's only later when you mature that you start thinking um hmm, does everybody want to listen to my powerful emotion what more can one do okay oh along the way things like society things like the community come into it and then you say what do people think uh can i do something beyond expressing myself can i influence other people or can i say something or depict something which will perhaps make a difference who knows but perhaps make a difference is again one of those things because it is very very subjective how make a difference to whom? Is this your notion of making a difference? Were you better off actually expressing what you felt in the first place? Especially in a world where, for example, things are becoming shorthand, where people's attention spans are going somewhere else. No one is really paying attention for too long. So who are you? Are you the one that is important or what do you do with art? At the end of it, I think it still comes down to the fact that true art is what you feel, what is within you, and what you can express with honesty. Thereupon, whether people's attention spans, uh, social media, etc., perhaps you can ignore it because very frankly, we, are not, we don't know what's going to happen in the next decade or the decade afterwards, whether we'll all be transferred into 3D creations or holograms. But if what you have created survives, and there I agree with Moinak, if it's timeless, the whole thing will be there. It will make that difference you wanted to make or you wanted to express when you first picked up your pen, brush, film, camera. Thank you so much, Anjuna. Finished. And so now we pass on to Pankaj. She is, uh, of course, a sculptor and deals with another aspect of the arts. So. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a wonderful occasion when we are speaking about how art live. Uh, it's a very huge topic. It's a huge subject. And it's like describing about life or art, something like that. Being an artist, uh, in my opening statement, what I can say is uh, this is an issue we think a lot. And being an academician in an institution, I see this issue matters a lot with the new upcoming artist students. And I find this, uh, with time, this issue is getting uh, sometimes so, uh, this thing that students are getting confused. And they, there is a distance between them and their work because there is so many other issues are coming into it. And I think one of the issues is which uh, uh, he said that about the trend. If the trend can hijack the whole thing, then perhaps we may miss the whole point. That is a very serious issue. And because uh, time is limited, so what I want to say is in the arts colleges, because the, his, this whole contemporary modern where the artists are challenging the past and the trends and whatever, but we fall into another, another trap of another trend. This is a constant 
struggle where we resist the uh, teachers who are very uh, conventional, where we discourage students to experiment or do something new things. Similarly, it's other way around also. There are uh, people who can, you know, influence them that this is the only way forward. So this is a very tight situation where you how to find and how to remain open-ended where you can in institution you can allow students to get maximum exposure but first thing first is find yourself when you will find yourself what you want to do and then you come in to do whatever art practice you want to do whichever form medium material or you know film painting sculpture installation anything the question is how much we are clear about our own identity, our own self, what we want to do. I will give you one example, one or two examples. For example, like a concept, uh, the one example uh, which I give to students sometime, a big concept can also create a big work of art. It's like Picasso's Godinica. The whole story and whole powerful concept is there. At the same time, Picasso's bullhead, simple, cycles, chair, uh, and, and the handle. And you can stand in front of that work for hours. And every time you go there, it just holds you. What is that? And for me, for art, it is your genuine passion, your, your genuine feeling, and your sense of visualization, sense of design, how you create, how you visualize that thing. At the end, that, those things matter. And those things take you, you know, to, into a timeless zone. I will give you one another example whose centenary is, this is going on centenary, is like Somnathor. He, all his life, he created sculptures of that pathos of struggle of Bengal famine that was etched into his, you know, consciousness. But every time he will create a sculpture, sculpture is transcending that tragedy. It is holding you somewhere where you can, you can, when you are looking at the work, you are looking at an extreme tragedy, but it is also taking you somewhere else. That poetic element is art, and that is the, you know, I think is, is a, is a, uh, makes art live. That's a small statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we have a, we open up our discussion a little bit, and let's start with Shomir, since Shomir you spoke about the heart. Don't you think uh, that art also needs a little bit of the mind? The Obviously. heart and the intellect, that has to be a balance. Obviously. That is heart means mind. Mind is a heart and heart is a mind. We say that our brain is a heart. We know that biologically the brain is a heart. We know that. In the heart table, the Amra Jeta Buji, Amra, on the okay, Indian Daba, Piti Billo, at a symbol the heart. Yamra Buji at a Dida, Dida Bolo the Kijohana, put out a concept. To Ami Putum Jeta Bolam, Jeta Raki de Hun Bolen, Yami Vishaskuri, Dida, Evong Jetakami Mind Bolchi, Etachara Hote Barena, Evong Jeta Ponkoj Bolo, Osada on Kota, Jetami Bola Chesta Gorchi Ageo, Akono Bolchi, is Heta Di. আমার একটা অনুভূতিকে আমি ধরার চেষ্টা করি আর্ট অনেক সময় স্টেটমেন্ট হয় আমরা বহু যেমন গোয়েনিকার কথা বলে ইটস ইটস এ স্টেটমেন্ট কিন্তু তার থেকে বড় হলো তার মধ্যে একটা অনুভূতি আছে আমরা পৃথিবীর বহু আর্টিস্টকে চিনি যারা আর্ট কলেজে পড়েননি কিন্তু তারা সারা পৃথিবী বিখ্যাত হয়েছে কেন আমরা যদি ভ্যান গগের কথাই ধরি যে ওনার কাজগুলোর মধ্যে আমি কাজগুলো অরিজিনাল দেখার সৌভাগ্য আমার হয়েছে ছোটবেলা থেকে বইয়ে দেখেছি the Kajulu Samne Darali Boyaja actor Manuset Kotuta Odfut at a passan taktevare, Ebon Se Jano Ridimoto Achur Katabola de Bare canvas in Monte, Segulu Ketachinkitu, Uni Autota non technical amiable, only technically art college for a Kajunai. Tales Hekanato Grammar Judi, the key technique, the key on a Gulach, Kin to Kajulu Daria as a passan everybody. Ever Taleki automatic concept name, Utiobo Suyachi. আমরা আজকে আমার যেটা প্রশ্ন ছিল বা আমি যেটা বলতে চাইলাম যে কনসেপচুয়াল আর্ট বলতে আমরা কিছু অবাস্তব জিনিসকে আমরা ভাবার চেষ্টা করি তা নয় পৃথিবীর আদি পর্ব থেকে যবে থেকে শিল্পের শুরু সমস্তটাই কনসেপ্ট 
আমরা ঈশ্বরভাবী কনসেপ্ট আমরা আর্টভাবী কনসেপ্ট মিউজিক আমাদের কনসেপ্ট দেয় যেটা মহিনাক বলল যে রবিশঙ্করের বাজনাটা আমাদের ভিতরে যে মূর্ছনাটা তৈরি করে এটা কনসেপ্ট সুতরাং কনসেপ্ট ছাড়া তো কিছু নয় কিন্তু কনসেপচুয়াল আর্ট বলে কিছু আর আর্ট আলাদা আর কনসেপচুয়াল আর্ট আলাদা মানে এদের প্রত্যেকটা আলাদা আলাদা জামা পড়া এটা আমি বিশ্বাস করি না যে কোনো আর্টের মধ্যেই কনসেপ্ট থাকেই একটা রামায়ণ মহাভারতে যারা ছবি আঁকছেন কি একটা পটচিত্র যারা আঁকছেন তাদেরও কনসেপ্ট থাকে তো ভাবার কোনো কারণ নেই যে পটচিত্র আঁকছেন মানে তাদের কনসেপ্ট নেই আর আমি শহরে বসে আর তিরিশ তলার উপরে ছবি আঁকছি তার মানে আমার দারুণ কনসেপ্ট এটা ভাবনা ভুল আমার মনে হয় আমি আর্ট কলেজ থেকে পড়েছি আমি লন্ডন থেকে পড়ে এসছি কি আমি গভর্নমেন্ট আর্ট কলেজ থেকে পড়ে এসছি কি আমি কলা ভবন থেকে পড়ে এসছি কি আমি বরোদা থেকে পড়ে এসছি তাহলে আমাদের কনসেপ্ট আছে যে গ্রামের মানুষটা শিল্প করছেন তার কনসেপ্ট নেই এটাও আমি বিশ্বাস করি না ঈশ্বর প্রত্যেককে ভাবার অধিকার দিয়েছেন প্রত্যেক ঈশ্বরে এমনও আছে হয়তো আমরা কনসেপচুয়ালি অনেক গুড অনুভূতির দিকে তারা অনেক গুড আমরা টেকনিক্যালি হয়তো অনেক সাউন্ড অনুভূতি হৃদয় দিয়ে তারা শিল্পকে এমন একটা জায়গায় নিয়ে যান তা নাহলে কিন্তু এগুলো দেখতো না মানুষ এতদিনে বর্জন করে দিত সারা পৃথিবীতে ট্রাইবাল আর্ট ট্র্যাডিশনাল আর্ট এগুলো সব বর্জন হয়ে যেত সুতরাং আর্ট আবারও বলছি উইথ হার্ট ফ্রম হার্ট আমরা যেটাকে মাইন্ড বলছি রাখি দিয়ে যেটাকে মাইন্ড বলছেন আমি বলছি মাইন্ড ছাড়া কিছু হতে পারে না যেটা ভালোবাসার কথা বললেন ভালোবাসাও কি মাইন্ড ছাড়া হতে পারে কখনোই হতে পারে না সুতরাং শিল্পের প্রথম যে আমার মন থেকে আমি কি আমি সমাজটাকে কীভাবে দেখছি আমি আমার ছাত্রছাত্রীদের সবসময় বলি ভাই তোমার নিশ্চয়ই বই পড়বে আমি বই পড়ার বিরোধী নয় কিন্তু অনেক শিক্ষাগুরু আছেন যারা সব সবসময় বলেন এই বই পড়ো ওই বই পড়ো আমি বলি না নিজেকে পড়ো এই নিজেকে পড়তে গেলে একটা একশোটা বই শেষ করা যায় আমি এক বছরে কি দু বছরে কি পাঁচ বছরে আমি শেষ করে দিতে পারবো কিন্তু নিজেকে পড়াটা সারা জীবনে শেষ করা যায় না শিল্পী যদি নিজেকে না পড়তে পারে সে তার ওটা শিল্প হতে পারে না এটা আমি বিশ্বাস করি না আগে দরকার আমাদের অর্থাৎ সেই আবারও বলছি আমার মনটা তখনই কাজ করবে যখন আমি নিজেকে জানতে পারবো তখনই সেখান থেকে নতুন কনসেপ্ট আসবে তা নাহলে আসতে পারে না আর নাহলে আমি কারোর মতো দেখলাম সে হয়তো একটা বাক্স বানিয়েছে একটা প্লাইট দিয়ে আমি হয়তো সেটা বাক্স না বানিয়ে হয়তো একটা আমি কী বলব মানে একটা বাড়ি বানালাম এটা হতে পারে কিন্তু ওই দেখার জিনিসটা ছাড়তে হবে দেখা আমাদের অটোমেটিকলি আসবে আমরা ওই সব দেখছি আমি জানি আমি 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 অনেক সময় বলেছি যে আমি যখন আপনারা অনেকেই জানেন যে আমি বহু আন্দোলনের সাথে জড়িত থাকি আজ অবধিও সেইখানে আমি যাই আমাকে অনেকে প্রশ্ন করেছে সবই তুই যাস এরকম তো ছবি আঁকার ক্ষতি হয় ছবি টবি না আঁকে সমীরাই যেই সব করছে আমি বলি না ওটা না করলে আমি ছবি আঁকতে পারবো না আচ্ছা নীলাদ্রি বলো ইউর পার্ট অফ দ্য লিটারি ওয়ার্ল্ড so when it comes to literature great literature what are the aspects that you feel you know uh that dominate you know creating great art and art that lives you know i by art we just don't mean visual art it, it could be arts. any form of art you know and there is an overlapping of literature and visual art in a huge way you know in all the arts actually mm. so in your mind what do you think Oh, I think I would definitely take one point uh, that Mohinak made. The heart made. and the uh, uh, mind, you know, that's oh, the debate. <laughs> I actually happen to believe that they're not the same thing. Yeah. I, I happen to believe that they're not the same thing because I think, uh, you know, I, I'm very glad that uh, uh, that Wordsworth's quotation was referred to over here, spontaneous overflow. Of, but is it, that, that's where people get stuck, is with this spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling. What they don't... come to is the later part of the quotation which is recollected in tranquility exactly. and exactly. that is what exactly. people miss out on so therefore you know so people very often say sir in that case whatever i i sort of you know vomit into my diary can can that be art um to which the answer would probably be no because you know ju- just just because you you're feeling something does not make it art um so i would actually uh, sort of uh, agree with what moinak said is that art should endure it should endure uh, and it should inspire so this this ties in with what i said that art should change you um so it applies to literature as well is that if a book doesn't change you it's not doing its job um and every single person who has ever read a book if he if they have finished reading the book and if they say you know 
I'm, I'm looking at the world in a slightly different way. If, if a book doesn't do it, if, if film doesn't do it, um, and by the way, I don't agree with you at all that film hasn't been considered as art. Film, you know, there's a museum of moving yes, image. Yes. So film has been considered art for at least... It's you a know. composite, holistic art. Yeah, yeah. very, it's very much holistic. So. Well, I mean, this is something that Wagner talks about when he talks about Gesamt Kunstwerk, you know, the complete work of art. Yeah. Film has got music in it, it's got images in it, it's got drama in it. So Wagner, if Wagner had been alive literature today... Literature also, literature. Be, literature. Huge, yeah. So had Wagner been alive today, he would not be composing operas, he would be directing movies, Moina. Right. Uh, so that's what he would be doing. Um, so yeah, I, I think it should change. Uh, great literature has changed all of us. I'm pretty certain that there is everybody in this room and those who are watching this live, everybody can name at least one book that they have gone back to over and over again. Um, and in the same way that we go back to paintings over and over again, why am I constantly looking at the, at the canvas that is behind us? Because, you know, I, I have to say that Shumitra Boshak, you know, um, he continues to disturb me. He continues to trouble me. Um, and I think this is something that great work always does. It disturbs, it troubles. And through that disturbance, through that troubling, it changes us. So, uh, Rita, being a critic, <laughs> will you? Um, it is uh, true, of course. You, I mean, heart and you know this passion, true, uh, Van Gogh. But then there's also Cezanne mm. and uh, Mondrian, uh, Malevich. So um, we Just cannot, lines. yeah, we, we we can't really compartmentalize in that sense. Uh, so Cezanne's inquiry was, I mean, like it was as uh, it influenced, really influenced a whole generation of uh, uh, artists. Uh, but here I just want to say something. When we see, uh, for example, I am uh, extremely, I, I love theater. That too, I think, is a complete, uh, you know, it's, it's got. But the point is, you know, you see something really like Shombu uh, Mitrir, Oidi Paus, and you know, you're so. Uh, moved or Raja or something and it does touch you but you know I have this feeling that Robindranath has been our icon uh, for a very long time but has his thinking really endured with Pahalis? I don't <laughs> think so. They are reading, they are singing his songs, they are looking at the words, they uh, maybe know what ph his philosophy uh, is but um, you think it has changed my life? <laughs> I'm very cynical about this. I think there's a compartment, you know, Absolutely. they put these things into separate compartments. I mean, here there's somebody who can go and see Bishar Joan, and then I, I should not bring up religion, but I'm saying that then they will practice something which is completely ritualistic. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I, you know, um, I come, I, I'm so sorry, but I'm yeah. sort of sure, scared. sure. And, uh, you know, I come from, from not only from literature, but I've also been teaching gender studies. Um, and what I tell to my students every time is that, you know, in patriarchy, respect is insult. Uh, so when patriarchy says that, you know, I respect you, that, that is basically yes. coded way of saying that I, I insult you. Um, and I think that is exactly what is happening to Tagore. I think we respect Tagore. Um, we respect Tagore. We, we're, going to, you know, we're going to decorate his picture, but we're not going to say what he, we're not going to imbibe what he says about, about against nationalism. We don't. We don't. So, so I think Tagore is somebody that we respect, uh, but re in respecting, we kind of push him away from us. Uh, and we refuse to engage with him. And we absolve ourselves of that responsibility of engage with him because na So we've done our job. So Moina, can you point that you would like to raise, I mean, you know, in defense of your Cynical. Yeah. Cynical. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I agree. I mean, definitely. You mentioned about influencing. I was that um, a major thing for you? So I it think, is. Uh, see, I, one of the, like, uh, for me, I felt that, you know, like when we were growing up, say, I remember my college years being a lot of time I used to spend, a person who moved me deeply was Sylvia Black. So I, I used yeah. to read The Bell Jar, you know, every, 
the word, every word she's saying, everything she's trying, it's, it was touching me. It's like something, it's, a, it's like a book. It was almost like someone was saying something that somehow I could connect with. And therefore to me, it was art. It was a novel. It was a perfect novel. I, it, it was a book that was under my pillow. And then, you know, with over the years, last couple of years, you know, you assume that who the hell is going to visit the Bell Jar? Who's going to be bothered with Sylvia Plath? And then social media shows up. Every other boy and girl who's going through a breakup is quoting Sylvia Plath. So she is reliving because those words will touch you. Because I think the purpose of art is it has to disturb you. It has to touch you on some level, which is transcending time. And... On a separate subject on Bengal, uh, definitely when we come to Tagore, I think we do have this problem. We have, we, we pride ourselves uh, for uh, quote-unquote being socialist uh, by nature, but clearly we're idol worshippers. And that's, that's what happens to Tagore. So we idol worship him to the point where we can't see beyond so there's no question. We don't. We cannot. We don't even consider questioning him. Where it was interesting, I was just having a a, a, a conversation with a, one of my fellow colleagues, and we were discussing how, ironically, Tagore being one of the finest to me, also a novelist, one of a fantastic structuring of novels that he wrote, a, a great poet who's actually known to Bengal as a music composer. Robindra yes. Shongita Junno, Robindranath is Robindranath. And similarly, Shottujit Rai, a filmmaker, one of the greatest in our country, is actually known for being a detective pulp novelist. <laughs> he is not known beyond Filuda. And uh, it's, it's, and this, mostly, I mean, it's whenever I hear these words, so I feel like, you know, we have to, I mean, in order to love art and in order to, for art to endure, we, can, we should be able to criticize it. We should be able to be get disturbed and say we are getting disturbed. Like the way Tchaikovsky was disturbing. And if he wasn't disturbing, I don't think modern music would have, I don't think EDM would exist. Absolutely. So, you know, I, if we cannot question art and if we put it on a pedestal and we start worshipping it, I don't know if that's going to endure. I don't think 100 years later... Uh, People will actually go back and see what was what's going on between the lines in Tagore when he's actually like when we go back to say Ghore Baide, the novel. Is he really standing up for Shanti or is he standing up for Nikhilesh? There's so much going on there, but I just be I think uh, in our uh, state in our culture we don't question it beyond it being a great artist's novel so questioning also helps reinventing i think i think as like Re a human being yeah. i think you when also you hear a song, when you read something when you read a novel when you read a poem it, it if, if only if it moves you will it will you question it so when you question it you're actually questioning yourself and therefore the work itself and I think that creates an internal debate as well as an external debate and we are, in, we are actually having a conversation as opposed to let's put it in a bookshelf, shut it down and no one's actually reading it. Huh. So I think the great works of art even like when we talk about say uh, Picasso or Dali, people have questioned it, there have been debates. I mean, when Pollock came out, people didn't know what to say. What, 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 what was that? Was, what, what is, is that even painting? Even Van Gogh, during Van Gogh, his lifetime. You know, lifetime, he was a poor guy. He was not recognized. There, there was all that. Is it, is it, uh, it, it's not skilled art. There was so much of criticism. But then the colors popped out. Something made you feel something, which is where I think the conversation opened up. And as long as the conversation is alive, I think art will be alive. But what do you think about shock? Sriyoshi. Shock is a major uh, trend which often, you know, it's like Snodal. I mean, you just shock and people have to uh, pay attention. Shock is a big uh, yes, instrument. Yes, sir, I'll come to that. But I agree with the, I, I just have got uh -huh. something to talk about. Yeah. That um, he said that rethinking, yes, it is a very major point of rethinking, revisiting art. Yes, that definitely matures you. But about Tagore, though I do not know much, but I was in Shantiniketan and I had uh, the opportunity to see the Pathobhavon children 
when uh, they used to sing uh, while going to their kitchen at in the evening they used to sing aji joto tara tobo akashe and you believe me i used to feel that with heart that yes there are so many stars up above so and while staying there i too realized i was from calcutta i to realize that you can only touch tagore or you can only enter uh, tagore's world when you are in contact with nature that is why i i have yes it is very very important you want to say something yeah, i just thought that it's not that you have to be in contact with nature but you have to be a nature lover lover yes rita di surely surely and uh, yeah i miss so many things <laughs> why if someone stops me no no i'm don't just to know it that you know the thing is my point is that if tagore uh, the spirit that still you know that still resides in shantiniketan campus at least uh, i can feel that hmm maybe it is very personal but what i uh, was saying about you asked me about shock but before going to that i must say that it is not only respect it is feeling it is love we have make it ritualistic today potishe boishak has become a ritual for us rovindra rachana boli there should be in the bookcase that was in our father's time now we do not put rovindra rachana boli in a row sorry we put it on a we put it on instagram <laughs> yeah yeah we we have the, because we have that space right but about shock then i'm coming back to shock shock is something um, it because of the sheer size you you may get a shock like if i just olden bag passed away a few days ago if you see his creation giant clothes spread or a giant something a big heart or a spoon with a ball they are blown over size over over the life size so that is also a shock then again if you see something very uh, ugly that also provides shock and uh, the why not the pop artists they also created lots of shock to the world like they when they when lichtenstein he painted he blew up the cartoons and then they called it art and that becomes a big question for the students also why do you call it art then you have to think of the composition the speech bubbles the connection and so many things and so ev from everyday life when things are blown up i'm just it's a, as a mundan example from my side when things are blown up to the maximum size you feel oh my god what is this that is also a shock but again at the same time uh, though i am not a pandal hopper but when i go to durga puja it's, it's some event is happening and uh, amidst that you know that all those dhak and all uh, things you find the devi devi then also you you are shocked to a certain extent maybe it is very pleasant so there are different kinds of shocks we receive the uh, from a painting or a work of art like this i just can't stop myself because i prepared this i mean i thought of uh, uh, talking about concept and uh, concept makes the trend that is what i understand about the world of art today first there is a concept and the mediocre people they picks up like uh, you, someone said box tum bole na kater bakso dekhlam ami o kollam seta dekhe tu juju buri boshali to ami ekta ashola chhere dilam this is the thing people do but um, what i was saying <laughs> no what what is it that um, yeah shock, con- shock. Uh, yes yes they it. yes i was talking i wanted to talk about michelangelo pistoletto he is an italian artist uh, from art povera i think monushida knows so well and i think many of you know michelangelo pistoletto so he you see he chose madonna madonna a classical antiquity uh, goddess of love beauty and all such things and he uh, placed it uh, as he installed that with surge of clothes 
you, you, the viewer can see only the back of the Madonna. Madonna is a classical antiquity. Why are you pulling it down? You are breaking the train, the hierarchy. Now, this surge of clothes, they don't have any form. They are anti-form. So, Madonna is a perfect form. So, it is, it is also a shock at that time. And the artists, they need courage to do such things. To do such things. And you know, one more thing, I don't know who said because I have a brain fog these days. Someone was talking about style and skill. What I feel, I think you said, I don't remember. Yes. Please don't mind. Okay, but um, uh, you know, every language, like just in front of me, this is a great work of art, Shakila's collage. Mm. I'm just sitting to it. Uh, face to face today and while listening to all of you I was looking at it and then I found that this piece is really really great which I couldn't realize as a viewer also I mean so many people and all so uh, the point is um, when you when suddenly it strikes that this is great art that also is a shock for a viewer or an artist or, an, or whatever, critic. Rita Di definitely So you're talking about sudden realization sudden can also Sudden also be. brings shock. So shock is also another factor. And uh, there are so many things. Style, yes, style. Style, like Shakila has her own language. Through all, over the years, she has built up a style and a skill. Style is equal to skill in mature art, in mature art, you know, that I feel all the time. Yes, so thank you. Pankaj, what would you have to add on to the, you're being a sculptor, sculptor, you're dealing with a lot of very palpable kind of emotional and, you know, uh, kind of elements. What I can say again is, uh, to consider art, to talk about art in today's time. First thing first, as I said, and which I share with students also, you know, we should not load them with our own knowledge or our own this thing with, you know, with the teacher, that is a problem with the teachers. And sometime before discovering them, Sorry. because this uh, line, visual art or performing art or any form of art, in today's time, in contemporary art practices, it's not a, like a traditional language where teacher has a challenge to find and discover a student. I have seen both kind of teachers, the great teachers, and I have that benefit. For example, I will say, in Shantani Ketan, we have a teacher like K.G. Subramanian. When we, as a student, dis go to discuss with him, it's like a, he used to touch us like a, I can compare him like a, old time baiddo you know he can touch your nerves and he will pinpoint you what is the issue and what is the problem which is a very rare thing to yes. uh, find a person who has a, such a depth of the ancient art as at the same time about the contemporary art which is a rare thing which not everybody can have because i have seen the great masters in the western world the contemporary i also studied at the royal college great people but they are specialized in a very contemporary art. But in, when you go to the ancient art, they, are, they find themselves in a very, uh, not a very comfortable zone. And there also I have learned so much, uh, people like Philip King, a great sculptor, when he came to me and talked about as an artist, he was talking to me like a layman. He was discovering me. And then he will give me something and he said, what you are doing is just fine, he continue that without disturbing that thing. So the problem as an institution is sometimes we, without knowing, without challenging a student to find yourself, giving them a wider exposure, but giving them a confidence to choose yourself and start your journey, rather than you know giving them set formulas. That is my one simple thing. I, I really want to add something here at this point. Like it was Master Mushai forever, Nandulal Bose. He said, nature, tradition, and originality. The, this triangle, this is, these are the things the students should follow. Nature is there for you. There is also tradition. You look back, 
to and originality that is your space how you absorb your surroundings because we also teach but though i am a theoretical teacher but uh, practical students they do come to me then i always say that why do you look for your subjects in the uh, website why don't you have your own kind of feeling then only you can discover your own necessity your own language this is what i wanted to say that nature tradition anjana you are a practicing author yeah. oh so God. what are the they, dilemmas that you go through ideas from there always anjana so you can tell us a little bit about writing because uh, anjana being an author yeah no what i will want to talk about is that uh, young people these days are actually questioning the system and there are a lot of young writers who feel that established bodies don't know what they're talking about <laughs> which is why there is a a surge in self publication you will find people publishing themselves and saying i'm doing it because i believe i have a right to be heard and uh, niladri most of the time it is that spontaneous overflow of powerful emotion <laughs> it is also unfortunately one thing i do believe that if you want to be an artist of any kind you have to get your grammar basics first yes absolutely. you can't be an artist unless you can draw yeah. you can't write unless you know grammar and you have to know your language uh -huh. at least one language this for some reason is dying or rather right now it is kind of static and i find it very disturbing because so and so and uh, oh yeah the other thing i've noticed that, that art is influence yes but young people want to be influencers ah because That's influencer true. is a trend which is very very important and you have a certain degree of narcissism within the yes, society yes exactly so it is a narcissistic society we are looking at uh, writers are writers i don't know if artists are self well they are painting but whether they're displaying by themselves i presume they are mm. yeah so this is like it's a burst it's like you know we want the system to accept us we want to be known now what that is doing for writing i really don't know it's throwing up a lot of interesting things for example somebody experimented with writing a novel which just consisted of one sentence and that went on and on and on and on through some 46000 odd words now uh, well that is something things throw up i also incidentally in this side tracking again i discovered that the american actor james franco sold non visible sculpture for $10,000 <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. so this that is, is also joker you know Cri well, it, it doesn't exist, exist. Yes. it doesn't exist that's all virtual uh, something Sorry. is there yes so you i mean we are there to make a point it seems right now and what that point we are making we don't really care we want to make a point so you accept it you don't accept it you question it fine but we're not going to listen to your questioning because that is what is in us and we will do it this is at least what i'm discovering i'm also finding a lack of the fact that somewhere we're losing the narrative because again it's like the grammar the language i believe that it is about the narrative and the narrative has to come from you whether it's the heart the mind or both together unless you have a narrative which is viable which touches people you probably will not survive but if your goal is to be an influencer and to get as many likes as possible on facebook on instagram wherever well if that's it then you're happy with what you're doing but the question is where are we going as to shock i would like to say that shock has always been there in art 
For example, there, uh, during the, when the Impressionists were working, there, there was this thing called the Salon de Refusé, where all the people who weren't accepted by the Academy had their showing and they said, sorry, we're making a point. Now, in their case, it was brilliant. But the question is, is it always brilliant? Because unless we question, unless we stand back and stop looking for icons and influences, I think we are going to end up in a bad space, at least for a while. And what do you think about uh, the issue of money? Do you think money has a corrupting influence on lasting, uh, you know, um, Moinak coming from the world of films where money is very, very important. How many people come and see your work, which has become, you know, a pain for a lot of very serious filmmakers, you know. They are really concerned about this because if I can't make up for the money, then, you know, I won't get the next film, you know, and money has become a huge issue, both in the arts as well. I paint, I'm, I'm creating sculptures, I'm making films, but it's not selling for some reason, you know. And today, in today's day and time, uh, how long is it sustainable to function without money? Money is uh, an imperative, I mean, you know, we need it absolutely. But money also has a debilitating influence because money also has its own uh, problems. It creates a genre which um, somehow defies pure art sometimes. Well, I mean, especially where I come from uh, in working in films and the history of films is this is definitely one form where you're completely uh, dependent on money. Uh -huh. You can't just uh, yeah. make a film for free. It's not gonna, you need money to make the film. Uh, a major definition of its success is how much money has been spent and how much money comes back. I mean, back. look at Shottujit Babu, the way he made his film, Pathir Pachali, three years, no money, a little bit of money, and then some money, you know, and then the film was done. Is it possible to sustain that kind of work in today's day and time? It's difficult, uh, and especially in a time where I think now, in the last 10, 15 years, if we look at it, everything is being defined by quantification. I mean, I was uh, recently reading a piece of by Francis Ford Coppola about, he was talking about The Godfather, the second one, which I consider one of the best uh, films, which is a sequel of the original, which is actually perhaps a better film. And he talks about his frustration about how the film was not financially successful, so it was not therefore considered as a good piece of art because it was not financially successful. Yeah. So I think a lot of times in the case of art, I think uh, one thing we majorly suffer from is if it's not quantified, how expensive is this? Yeah. Is how many people know of this person? How much money did that make? How many copies of that book did it sell? That defines, that kind of uh, takes it forward. So when I was talking about Tagore, it was also it's not directly financial, but it's the quantification of the Nobel Prize defines him. Mm. I mean, there are great filmmakers, but Shoktujitra wins the Oscar. So the, the westernized quantification or uh, acceptance, uh, acceptance, acceptance sort of. which is kind yeah. of, it's a kind yeah. of a monetization. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where they, they want. When a filmmaker makes a, or an artist makes a piece of work, but they, you don't know how to quantify it. It doesn't have enough likes not enough tickets were bought, maybe that book has not sold enough. Now, how do you have a perception? How do you perceive it? Is it good? Is it bad? Am I supposed to like it? Or is my natural instinct to start criticizing it because it's not financially viable? So I think the world has been taken over by uh, this capitalist nature where we just, we don't know how to define anything, accept anything, criticize. Our, our, our major, uh, many times our criticism comes from its lack of uh, success, which is defined by finance. So it's, I think we are in a very weird way. Every human being clearly is looking for attention. So in that universe, I think when you're talking about shock value, it becomes important because if you can't shock someone, you're not getting their attention. attention. Now can you, you have a piece of work that can be deemed to be art. 
So I think that would be a nice way because that's sort of sort of a, uh, an advertise ad, uh, advertorial like a brand. teaser. Like give it something. <laughs> uh, you need people to yeah. see it before yeah. they talk notice about it. it. We, I mean, uh, don't shock them in a in a in a uh, uh, perverse way, but you can shock them in a way where you get their attention. Huh. Because I feel everyone's too busy attending to themselves. I think a better word would be surprise, because it may not always shock. But something new will surprise, and surprise has a positive connotation. You know, shock may work both ways. Well, negative, uh, I'm what, I mean, honestly, to me, the media and uh, the Republic TV in the last two years, I think negativity gets you going. Yeah, I don't think uh, a positive surprise is what it says. Moinak, I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I don't যে কোনো শিল্পই কিভাবে বঞ্চনা শিকার হয়ে যায় মানে তাদেরকে এস্টাবলিশই করা হয় না যে সেগুলো ভালো আর্ট বা আমরা সেটা গ্রামের প্রচুর শিল্পী এরকম আমরা শুধু ছবি আঁকা নয় সেটা গানের জগতে আছে সাহিত্যে তো রয়েছে কিন্তু আমার কথা হলো যে আমার যেটা নিয়ে আমরা প্রথম শুরু করেছিলাম রাখিদি যে আর্টটা আমরা কোনটাকে বলবো আমি এবং শখটা ডেফিনেটলি একটা পার্ট আমার আবারও বলছি আর্ট আমরা কাকে বলবো সেটাকে আমাদের আগে বোঝা দরকার তার কারণটা আমি একটা ছোট উদাহরণ দেব আমার একটা হরতালের দিন আমাদের অঞ্চলের এক মামা বলে পরিচিত সব বন্ধুরা এই মামা ডাকে তো হরতাল হরতালের দিন মামার বাড়িতে যাওয়া হচ্ছে মামা পেশাতে একজন তোমার মেকানিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ার ভদ্রলোকের টাকা শেষ হলে উনি আবার মেশিন তৈরি করেন প্রিন্টিং মেশিন আবার টাকা আসলে আর মেশিন করা বন্ধ তো এই হলো ক্যারেক্টার তো মামার বাড়িতে যাওয়া হয়েছে তো মামার আমার আরেক বন্ধু মামাকে জিজ্ঞেস মামা তো দেখছি মামা রান্না করছে তো মামাকে জিজ্ঞেস মামা কী রান্না করো বল কেন ডিমের ঝুল ডিমের ঝুল তো আমার বন্ধু কাছে গেছে গিয়ে দেখে তোর মধ্যে ঝোল হচ্ছে ডিম নেই তো বললো মামা তো ডিম কোথায় বলে আর কইস না আজকে হরতালের দিন তো ডিম তো পাই নাই তো ডিমের ঝুলটাই বানাই তো এই ডিম ডিমের ঝোল হবে ডিম না থাকলে কিন্তু সেটা সত্যিকারের ডিমের ঝোল হলো না এটাতে শখ থাকতে পারে আর্ট হবে না সুতরাং আর্ট থাকতে গেলে হৃদয় আমরা মাইন্ড আর্ট আমরা যাই বলি আমি বলছি ওই না এবং অর্থ পেলাম কি পেলাম না কেউ আর্ট বলল কি বলল না ধরে নিচ্ছে আমার মৃত্যুর পরও কেউ বলল না আর্ট এগুলো কোনোটা ম্যাটার করে না যার করার না সেই কেচোর মতো কেচো জানে না ও কেন মাটিটা করে যে শিল্পী সে তার কাজটা করে যাবে আমি আল ট্রান্স এন্ড দ্য ডিসকাশন আই থিঙ্ক ইট ওয়াজ ওয়ান্ডারফুল দ্যাট অল অফ আস মোর লেস কভার্ড এভরিথিং আই উইল end uh, our discussion with a little story about Gernika. It has been mentioned several times. Uh, there was an exhibition a few years back called uh, Picasso 1932. A fantastic exhibition and the research came up with wonderful insights into Chicago's, I mean, uh, into Picasso's that, you know, the 30s, which was a very crucial time in his life. Uh, so uh, he was, uh, you know, he was married to Olga, uh, uh, the Russian ballerina, and uh, he was deeply in love. He married rather late uh, at the age of 30, and he was really being Spanish, coming from the Spanish background. He wanted to be a family man, have his family, and that's why he got married to this beautiful ballerina. But somehow the marriage started, uh, you know, becoming a little embittered, and then walks in another young lady in his life, uh, Marie Therese uh, Walters. And so uh, at all this was happening in the 30s. And ultimately, uh, when he moved in with Marie Therese and also had a child with her, that's when his first wife, Olga, got absent. She couldn't take it any longer. She just walked out with their only son, Paola, Paolo. And as she walked out, Picasso suddenly realized, I mean, it was all his fault. I mean, the way he was leading his life, it was his fault. But nevertheless, he just couldn't bear it. You know, it was like a, a total anguish for him. You know, it was his family breaking up, his only child whom he loved dearly. And so that whole period has been described uh, in uh, all the literature on him uh, as one of the worst periods of his life. 
And this particular uh, period was a sort of thing that he was going to soul searching, cursing himself, almost grieving, you know, it was very, very tormenting for him. Then suddenly comes the uh, prospect of doing this commission for Guernica, a little town in the northern part of Spain, which was bombed by the fascist forces of Italy and the nationalist forces of Spain and uh, Germany. They all together bombed this little town. And that created a huge uproar in the democratic world. And people came to Picasso that being a Spanish, you please do something and do a painting or something against this entire movement. To be very honest, Picasso hadn't, he had sentiments for Guernica, but he had never visited Guernica in his life. A little town in Basque, he'd never visited there. He had some sentiments for the Republican forces over there. Uh, he had some sentiments for the left, leftist kind of ideas over there. But uh, then he took up the assignment. And what did he do? It was the personal trauma, the personal anguish that he felt when his family broke away. He transferred that, transformed the entire thing and metamorphosed it into Gerdinand. So you, what you see in Guernica has nothing to do with Guernica per se, the place. It has no relevance. But it has relevance to a personal episode in his life. The pain, the anguish, the torment, the anger, the disappointment, everything was poured into that painting. And I think it is this kind of an engagement, this kind of self-immersion, and this kind of questioning, searching, and expressing yourself honestly and in a genuine way of course, with great amount of intellectual trust and conviction, that is what creates great art. That is what is bound to move the world. When you put all your heart and soul into a lovely piece of curry, the curry is bound to taste well and impress everyone who's eating it. So I think, you know, there's something um, uh, with a film also, you know, like Shottujit Rai's uh, he almost feel you want to cry with that, uh, you know, the episodes that are happening. You want to laugh at the fun things that the brother and sisters are doing, uh, you know, and the poverty and everything. It's so palpable and, you know, and beautifully expressed and shown that uh, that is what is moving. And if the expression is genuine and if it comes out of the heart and soul, where the heart, soul and the mind because he was also playing with a lot of ideas. He had just come out of Cubism, and you know he was creating new ideas and new forms. And for each, there were about 300 uh, you know, preparatory drawings on that one. And he finished this canvas in four months. So you know, this kind of an engagement is what makes great art. Whether you talk about the Pieta, whether you talk about uh, the birth of uh, Adam, or you talk about Nataraja, which is a fantastic expression of a very esoteric idea expressed in a figurative way. Very, very difficult to do that. And you see something like the Taj, or you see uh, all the great works in uh, history. It's bound to move you. And those are the elements that I feel are absolutely uh, you know, crucial to make art live. So I think we can have a little question answer session now. So any questions from the audience? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, since you were talking about uh, Picasso's Guernica, and I'm wondering, does dystopia sell? Does it attract public interest? And, and my second question would be, how much um, is is this uh, fueled, this public interest fueled by the media? Is it the media that fuels public interest or the aesthetics which fuel public interest? Anyone wants to answer this, please? Niladri, or, I mean, critic, critic, <laughs> Rita? They are not themselves part of it. They enjoy, uh, I shouldn't say they enjoy, but when they see something, 
misfortune of others or some kind of a, a fantasy land where horrible things uh, happen, they uh, kind of they, they, they think that they are lucky they are not there. But at the same time, at the back of their minds, I think there is that empathy. Oh my God, that could actually be happening. So I think if they were part of the, that dystopia, that would be terrible. But to just see it from a distance is, is I think, something uh, they actually relish because it's a, it's a kind of a shock. That shock element is there. And what was the other one? Yes, the media. Yes, I think uh, to an extent, uh, what, what do you think, uh, Moina? Do you think the media is, yes, the media is because the media picks up uh, things which are very unpleasant but at the same time, people go to that uh, kind of news. What is unpleasant? That is what people read. What do you think? So it has a shock value also. Think, uh, yeah, I think uh, definitely the media plays a big role in how creating perception. I mean, let's look at a very basic image. On the street, you see an old couple, two old friends uh, meeting after 50 years. They're having tea. That's a beautiful image. Then you see a, a newly married couple, young couple holding hands, walking down the road. Beautiful image. And then on the right, you see a car crash and a dead man. I think everyone's going to be looking at the dead man in the car crash because it's shocking, it's scary, and the media is definitely going to sell it. So I think there is a there. I think entropy, chaos, negativity there has has a tremendous attraction right now right here of course it may not relive it may not live on but right now it's going to I, I think human beings have a tendency to look at that accident i remember when covid started uh, one of the questions that started how many people are dead it's almost like the number wasn't enough it was frustratingly low and as the number increased it, there was a sense of satisfaction that yes it's a big thing Next question, <laughs> but tell me, is, is, is the, the media leading this or is it being led? Well, but the media is giving people what they want. Human beings want something which the yes, media is the providing. The media is always very uh, sensitive to what the public wants. I think um, Mr. Niladri Chatterjee disagrees. No, no, I, I would actually, no, no, no. It's, it's a cop-out, Moinak. It's, it's something that Bollywood has been using for many, many decades. We only serve what the people want to see. Extremely dishonest. Um, I think that, um, so there are two kinds of art. One kind of art, which I call pretty art, which is acceptable, which rich people like to hang on, the, you know, when they're eating their, their souffle. Um, so, so that is one kind of art which usually doesn't sell very well. Then you have the other kind of art, which, which is sort of, you know, conventionally regarded as being ugly because it pushes the envelope. It, it sort of asks certain basic questions. And I think that um, the, there is no one kind of art. I think there is, there is one kind of art which the corporate sector would want to invest in because it looks good in their front office. Uh, and then there's this other kind of art which may not look good in their front office, but which will be bought by the aficionado because they feel that this is something which which they should invest in not for any other value than just to say that you know this is this is taking art forward I think the media has got an interesting role to play unfortunately media is also um, has always been driven by major capitalist interests which means that they are only going to focus on those artists that they regard as being bankable. And I think that this is where social media has been a very, very important challenge, I think, because you have the conventional media that is promoting one kind of art only because it's only got that amount of space. Um, Instagram, for example, or Facebook, because the space is limitless, you have a lot of artists who are showing their work, which the conventional media would not want to focus on. So I think that now we are living in a very exciting time when it isn't just the conventional print media that has got the monopoly um, as to what kind of art should be brought to public attention, social media, even TikTok, why not, uh, is creating a space where new artists are emerging who would not be able to emerge otherwise. Any other questions from the audience? 
मनुषित बाबू wondering i have a question to shreyushi ji that uh, you have mentioned a couple of times that uh, anti form so if you could explain a bit more on that because i do not think when we are thinking uh, form or art and work of art then definitely form is coming and action is coming so yeah is um it will be a bit of classroom lecture though <laughs> but uh, antiform is something which does not have any definite sh geometric shape okay like uh, if you throw something from high above it will fall down and when it is falling down it is in the process therefore it is antiform you have not definitely fixed it that is anti form you get them are you from artistry or art student uh, no uh, may i know I your name please bonotonni sorry bonotonni okay nice name <laughs> so but that is uh, that is what we call anti form in art and this is very much uh, it is a postmodern concept because you know these are binaries when there is good there will be bad so when there is form there is anti form uh, it yeah, is like that because in indian tradition in even in gita that form is like akshar it's something which is kuthast it's uh, it's uh, intangible so form should have a content whatever form it is yes see uh, when seza was painting his apples he wanted to get a hard shape i uh, sorry hard forms uh, i mean solid apples for that he had to use forms mm. and to color, um, color tones to make them look like a real apple so they are forms of an apple but if when you uh, are you are not concentrating on form but your medium which you are handling since okay. these days you know there are so plenty many mediums if you want to put that this way on the wall which is in the village in of orissa i have seen they call it choti chita or choti chita i don't know they make lovely walls i mean not alpona but but just by throwing paints then that is again anti form it is just so, going so against the form it's some of that paint and that or making uh, me and if you could just sort of look at you how do you describe that work over there yeah yeah but but since it is confined in a canvas i just cannot say it uh -huh. is anti form so you have to have a you know which is free just uh, that's why i said there's a work its name is as asphalt run down uh, by a land artist which is again anti form you say it will be cloud and form like that Now, if I am a poet, I could see a rabbit in that. <laughs> no, no, it's a nice question. Please, come on. My, my, my voice is loud enough, I think. <laughs> <laughs> But if if I say if I see a rabbit in a cloud, then ah, I that can be, call it anti. Yeah, yeah, that But can. But vapors, smokes, you know. Rakhide, do you remember that work? Some smoke was coming out from the ground. Uh, So that is again anti form you know that that's why i uh, uh, pointed out michelangelo pistoletto with rags piles of rags maybe they are strewn all over the floor then what will you say that is anti form you anti can make a form out of that but it is an established thing that don't i'm not talking in indian context okay i haven't read gita or all the lines no, of gita no, there is a problem with this postmodern coinage because the form i'm referring to is not the indian form the point is like a region so it's more region yes form as a region not as a point not as the euclidean point form as idiom idiom not idiom region a region R E G I O N. Yes. 
I don't understand, I don't get that for me. A form can be solid, a form which is oh. just you. Because the moment. On, that is again anti form. Because it is not, you see, when you build up a sculptural head, you are building up, you build up a cow, it is cow, taking the shape of a cow. But when you are throwing against the gravity, what are you doing? That is also formed because form. because when I am moving my hand, I am also including the space within. So space, that, space you can include by drawing lines also. No, not only drawing no, lines. You can, you can blow in, air and say foo. And that is also that also is, includes region. Hmm. Yeah. So but yes, that same thing. No, but the question is, is why it is see if there there is it's not a solid form. It is scattered when things are scattered on a gallery floor. I think Nilajri, would you like to speak? Because they are going against something which will build up his shape too. No. But the installation can also add the form. Sorry? Installation can the form. No. Installation has got something. With what kind of material you install, that depends on it. If you have so many things and if you have all the uh, indexical signs which build up an installation form, then it is installation. Now, would you say that conceptual art, as it is called, it is, a, it is just concept of form? Yes, it's a concept. Sometimes it's a concept, but and sometimes it, it, it can have a form. It can have a form. In fact, it does have a form. Yes, yeah. In fact, it's an example of this. Oh, that is anti-retina. Uh, <laughs> what will you do when something is anti-retina? Well, this is the play of word in modern times. I mean, that, is that there is a we very serious lost, problem. We, we have, that is your, maybe to your opinion, <coughs> once the theory is set, we have to, uh, sorry, once the theory is set, we understand the logic and we go by the logic and the terms are coined. No, but artists, this, no, artists are philosophers. Artists, are, if you do not agree, we cannot help you. You must give a think and read antiform, books on antiform, then only you will realize. Because design, yes. I have to say subjective or our understanding depends on whether we will call it antiform or form. It is very much subjective, I think. And it is, it is depending of upon course, the it understanding. It is subjective. কিন্তু যখন একটা স্কালচার তৈরি হচ্ছে কোনো ফর্ম দিয়ে ট্রেডিশনালি যেটা হতো যার জন্য আমি ওইটা বললাম না দাঁড়ি আছে একটা ইয়ে এই উইভি যখন ওই ইয়ে বেনাস বেনাস আর তার পাশে কাপড়গুলো ধরে ধরে পড়ে যাচ্ছে সো ওখানে যে ওই কাপড়ের যে ইয়েটা সেটার মধ্যে তো কোনো ফিক্সড ফর্ম নেই তুমি যদি আজকে কিছু নিয়ে কাপড় দিয়ে বানাও দ্যাট ইজ डिफरेंट again and if you uh, want to get your friends and all to see this program it will be on youtube uh, from i think in another two days time so you can follow up in case you want to but it was lovely thank you all our speakers you. wonderful you. for you know uh, being with us finding precious time from all your important appointments thank you so much moina rita niladri anjana Pankaj, Pankaj has come all the way from Shantiniketan. Shomir has left all his television programs to come especially here today. <laughs> today, especially today. <laughs> so she has come from a long distance. Thank you all. Thank you yes, all thank you. who are attending our programs. Thank you uh, very much. And um, I had a, a question, but maybe we can discuss that yeah, later. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, Over a uh, cup of tea. Yes, <laughs> and some snacks. But thank you all for uh, coming, and I hope you've enjoyed the discussion and that we can, you will continue this uh, conversation with your friends as you leave the gallery. Thank you again.